I am Karan Bhatia. I am chatting with former welterweight champion Kermit Cintron. Kermit, uh, it's been a while since we've seen you in the ring. I believe your last fight uh, was in 2018. But I know that uh, you've been talking about a comeback. Um, and we also know another fighter who's been talking about a comeback is Sergio Martinez. I actually interviewed Sergio to talk to him about his comeback. And I know that you've expressed interest in fighting Sergio Mar Martinez in a rematch. Your first fight was a draw. Um, so what, uh, what makes you want to fight Sergio one more time? Uh, it was a fun fight. It was, a, it was a very competitive fight. It was a hard fight. Um, you know, I'm a competitive fighter. Uh, I, I, I like the challenge. And, you know, Sergio and I, we, I, I feel that Sergio and I have unfinished business. Um, I think that the fight uh, can definitely uh, be made um, as long as we, I mean, he needs to agree with it. I, I'm, I'm down to it. Uh, it's just up to the promoters. And uh, you, you mentioned uh, the unfinished business there. You guys first fought uh, about 10 years ago was, was the first fight between you and uh, Sergio Martinez. So it's been a while. Now you are age 40 years old. He's 45 years old. Um, just in terms of, of fighters' safety, I mean, we've had some tragedies in the sport in the last few years. In terms of safety, do you think that, that it would be a safe fight in terms of um, you guys are older in age now? Um, I think it's, I mean, it's, it's still, I mean, uh, Martinez is a competitive, um, athlete. You know, he's a, he's a, I know, um, from what I remember, he was a, a professional biker, a BMX biker, I believe. I'm not sure if that's the right, um, sport, but I think it was some, in, in that category, um, in sports. Um, you know, I'm, I, I got a wrestling background. Um, you know, I, I've been, God, um, Com being competitive since I was a little kid, uh, and I just love com competing, and that's what my life is all about. Uh, I think with both of us, you know, at our ages now, um, it's still it's still going to be a competitive fight. Um, you know, we I know that he he takes care of himself. Uh, I take care of myself as well. Um, you know, I know a lot of fighters out there that are out drinking, partying, you know, using drugs. I mean. And, and that's where I think where, that's where the tragedy comes in. Um, but in regards to, you know, the fight being a safe fight, I think it will be a, a, a safe fight. And Sergio, uh, and you're right, Sergio, I believe, uh, competitive cycling, uh, soccer player, he's done a bunch of different things. Um, you yourself with your wrestling background that you mentioned. Um, Sergio, when he said he wanted to come back, he was targeting a, a, a different rematch with Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Um, We've heard you calling out Sergio. Have you heard anything from Sergio's camp in terms of an interest on their side of having the rematch with you? Uh, all I hear is crickets. That's <laughs> all I hear, man. Uh, you know, I'm just, I just put it out there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the game to, to, to fight the best, and Martinez is one of the best. He, he was a, a great champion for many years, now working on his comeback. Um, so, you know, the fact that you called him out, it gives us a, a chance to have a little bit of nostalgia, to kind of look back at the first fight. Um, it was an interesting fight. It was, uh, you could call it controversial. It ended up being a draw. There were some bizarre moments that went on. Um, when, you, when you look back, uh, probably the defining moment of the fight, it was the end of round seven. Uh, Martinez knocked you down to the left hand. You felt like it was a, a headbutt, and the ref was counting you. You got up as he was saying 10. It was the end of the round. There was some confusion. Um, what do you remember about, about that moment, that seventh round? I don't know. I remember, like, I, I mean, I saw the fight um, many times. Um, and, of course, you know, it wasn't a headbutt. Uh, but at the moment, I felt like it was. It was a, it was a punch that I walked right into. Uh, and, when, and when that happens, it hurts. Um, you know, was I, was I, uh, dazed, uh, where I was hurt and I, I didn't know where I was. I was, I know exactly where I was. Um, you know, I, I was listening to the, to the count. Um, I, I mean, 10 out of 10 times I beat the count. Um, so I don't know where people are saying that, that, uh, I didn't beat the count. Um, it, it was a uh, it was an interesting round, but I mean, you know, in, in regards to the to the ref um, waving off the fight, but then changing his mind, um, that was weird to me. Um, but for him to let let the fight continue, I think that was the right decision.
And it was it was a weird moment there where the ref he seemed like he was tentatively waving it off, but wasn't being definitive. Um, and and you hate to you know throw a ref under the bus because it's a very hard job. Uh, you have to make split de- second decisions. But did you feel like he was being a little indecisive in that moment? Um, I don't know. I mean, I I was up and I was ready to go. Um, watching the fight, I, I mean, in all honesty, like at the time, I didn't know what was going on. Um, but then when he was waving his hands up, I, I thought he had stopped the fight, and I and I knew for a fact that I had beat beaten the, the count. So there was no reason for him to 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 have stopped it. Uh, for him to, uh, if he did, uh, was deciding on stopping it, but then changed his mind. I think you know that the decision that he made on letting the fight continue it was the right decision. And it's, and it's a world title fight as well. So, and it was uh, an HBO main event, a big fight. Um, and at, at, in round 12, Sergio got uh, – dedu- they took a point off uh, for punching behind the head. Um, and that actually ended up um, making a big difference in terms of the scorecards. What did you think about uh, the referee taking a point off for Sergio hitting behind the head? There was a lot – I mean, there was a, a many times in, in, during the fight where he had hit me behind the head. Uh, and for him to uh, have finally taken that point off, yeah, it was, it was the right decision. But, I mean, he could have taken at least two more points off. Uh, from I mean, he was hitting me from, I think it was round three and on. And eventually uh, it went to the scorecards, uh, two of the scorecards a draw, one for Martinez. When you look back at the scoring of that fight, um, how, how did, what did you think about the overall scoring of that fight being a draw? Um, I mean, I, I, like I said to you, I've watched the fight um, a few times and there was, there was times where I scored where I won. There's times where I scored where he won. So, I mean, it just – it is what it is. You know, it, the, the judges had it right. You know, uh, a draw is a draw. And I think that, um, you know, getting back and, and doing it again, it, it would be definitely be an interesting fight. Uh, boxing is subjective in nature, as we know, with the three judges. Um, so now in terms of your career, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we've the last time we saw you – uh, in the in the ring in a professional boxing match was February of 2018. Um, so from now until then, uh, have did you retire and now you're thinking about coming back from retirement? Were you planning on continuing fighting? What what was uh, going on in the last few years? I've been um, in regards to like the boxing uh, part of things. I kind of like just you know uh, been done with it, uh, but didn't mean I was retired completely because uh, at that time. Uh, I was out uh, in Virginia training for uh, MMA. Um, I was supposed to fight. I believe it was March, sometime in March, like um, like uh, I want to say like March 18th, some of that I was supposed to fight in Atlanta City, uh, my first pro MMA fight. And with all the pandemic, uh, the virus, the COVID-19 uh, went on, that kind of like screwed everything up. And I know that you had interest in getting into MMA for a while. You have the wrestling background like we talked about. Um, the, the MMA fight that you were going to have in March, would that be under the Bellator umbrella or was that a different promotion? That was a different promotion. Um, can't think of the name right now, but uh, it, it's, a, it's a, a, more of a the East Coast. Um, I can't remember the, 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 the club, but uh, it was a uh, – a fight that if I would have won the fight, they, Bellator was going to sign me. That was the deal. And so now looking ahead, obviously we know the pandemic has uh, thrown a wrench in a lot of people's plans. Things have uh, definitely taken a turn. We didn't have live sports for a long time. Boxing is coming back. MMA is coming back. Do you, if you had your choice of what you would do next, do you want to get back in the boxing ring? Do you want to go into MMA? What do you want next? Listen, if I can get the fights that I want, you know, I, I won't mind um, giving a, uh, 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 Angulo a rematch um, you know that's a fight that, that I'll be interested in taking uh, Martinez fight as well I mean even a, even a third fight with Margarito you know uh, I'm, I'm down to, to whatever and, and that's gotta, it's gotta be, it's gotta be a, a fight that, that makes sense and I think those fights do make sense I mean I, I, I would even take uh, on Chavez 
And, and that's what I wanted to ask you about next. I mean, you fought so many great fighters through the years. You fought Canelo Alvarez, Sergio Martinez, Paul Williams, Angulo. Um, when you look back at, at you know, all the, the fights you had in your career, uh, what, was, what, what fights stand out for you? What was, what was the toughest fight that you had in, in your career? Uh, I think the, the toughest fight is definitely Martinez. Uh, like I said, you know, a uh, very athletic uh, uh, guy. Um, so the fact that he's a southpaw and slick, um, great movement, you know, it just it just made it it made it hard for me. But at the same time, it, it was a great fight, and, and that's what I look, you know, forward to. I I just like those hard fights like that, very competitive. It just and challenged for, for me, anyways. It challenges me mentally it, and phys- physically. And and you also mentioned uh, Antonio Margarito. You fought him twice. Uh, first, I believe in two thousand five, and then later, I think in two thousand eight. Um, he ended up he ended up knocking you out in in the first fight and the second fight. Uh, shortly after the second fight, though, um, he fought Cotto. It was a uh, pretty shocking upset. He was able to knock out Cotto, and then he fought Shane Mosley. And we all know that he was caught with the uh, plaster of Paris and the wraps, um, the illegal hand wraps there. Do you feel like because he was caught uh, in that Mosley fight that he may have cheated in any way in the times that he fought you? I, I believe so. I believe so. I mean, like, you know, I, I've said it before, and I know there's, there's, a, there's a, uh, an article out there um, after the second fight with Margarito. There's was, there was an article out there stating um, what I said in regards to him uh, having something in his gloves because there's, there was something in there that I've never felt through all my career in boxing, I, I think, you know, uh, that uh, Teddy Reed was the hardest puncher, and and I didn't feel anything like Margarita's gloves. So uh, he had to have something in there. And did you feel that, as, a, as I said, you fought him twice. That was in 2008 was the second one. Um, did you also feel like something was up in the first time you fought him in 2005? Um, not too much in the first, in the first one. Um, but then again, you know, you think back, it's like, you know, there's only there's only been one fighter that's really busted me up, and that was Margarito. And both both fights. Both my uh close to uh being shut uh in both fights. So I mean like in any other fight that I've had, uh I mean like yes, I've been marked, but not as busted as uh Margarito had me. And uh, the other, you know, we were talking about how Sergio Martinez, the fight was a little bit uh, interesting, bizarre, you could say. The bizarre, bizarre fight was probably against Paul Williams. That was in 2010. Um, it, was, it was actually a close fight. You were leading on one of the scorecards, um, but you guys ended up getting tangled up and you fell out of the ring. Uh, what do you remember about that moment, uh, falling out of the ring, you hit your head? I mean, it's not something we see every day in boxing. Uh, just, you know, just uh, it was – it was a very competitive fight. Um, I felt like I was winning all three rounds and to that point. Um, you know, I, I know I had – he was hurt in that round. Um, and just the – we just tangled up. I mean, I, you know, I was putting a lot of pressure because I, I had my forearm behind his head because he, he was bending down, and I was putting pressure. Um, as the man told me before, you know, somebody bends like that, you put pressure with, with your forearm. That will fatigue them even, even more, faster. Uh, so I was doing that, and when he fell, my momentum from all that pressure, my momentum just, just took me out of the ring. Um, you know, a lot of people say that I, I dove out of the ring and all this. I mean, like, come on, man, this is this is a this is a, 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 a two world class fighters fighting for millions of dollars. You know, um, to to and being the best out there, uh, and and for people to think that I I dove out of the ring and say it's just ridiculous. And when they, they had to carry you out uh, on a stretcher, I, I, you hit your head on some equipment as you fell out of the ring. Um, what, was it, uh, what were you feeling in that moment when you were getting carried out? Did you know where you were at all? Were you aware of what was going on? No, I was, I was uh, totally fine. The only thing that happened to me was that um, when I fell out, I hit a monitor, a TV monitor on my, my left side and knocked the wind out of me. Uh, so I was just, just trying to catch my air on my, my breathing back and the doctor he was over there asking me if I was ready to continue and I'm, I'm just shaking my head no um thinking in my head as well that I ha- that I had five minutes to recover um and by the time uh I was ready to go he had waved the fight 
And in regards to, like, you know, I, I was just disappointed, very disappointed because, like, you know, that was a fight that I knew I was, clearly I was winning. Uh, it's a fight that I that I wanted. Um, and I know winning that fight was going to take me to the next level. And you've had a bunch of uh, – you fought a bunch of uh, big names in the sport. Um, the other one I wanted to ask you about, of course, Canelo Alvarez. He's on top of the sport right now in terms of popularity. Uh, being a pay-per-view draw, things like that. When you fought him, he was still pretty young in age. Um, he wasn't as established as he is now. Did you notice anything different, special about Canelo when you fought him, or was it was it uh, a, a similar fight to others that you had been in? Yeah, it was similar fights to others. I mean, at that time, I, I uh, taking a fight in three three weeks' notice. Um, uh, fighting, fighting him in his hometown, Mexico City. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's just a, another regular fight for me. Um, you know, I didn't really uh, think of him much of him at that time. Uh, to to see him to see him where he's at today, I said, "Wow, you know, uh, at least I lost to a guy that's one of the best in the world today." So um, I'm okay with that. Um, but uh, yeah, he's just a, a good fighter. You know, a great fighter, great champion, and, and he's. Definitely making a lot of uh, noise out there. And in in your last professional win in a boxing ring was in 2016. More recently, you had a draw, loss, and a no contest. So, is it safe to say that uh, you know you said you're not retired? Are you hungry to get back into competitive fighting, whether it be MMA, boxing, and get a win on your on your record, a recent win? You know, it, it's it's to, for me. It's all about um, getting the 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 fights that I want to get me motivated again. Um, you know, I. I don't, I don't believe in the whole age situation. You know, I feel like I'm 25 years old right now. Um, you know, I, I'll, I'll do it out with anybody. Uh, I just need the, the, uh, the right fight uh, that come that that I, that I will want. Uh, it'll, it'll definitely motivate me to, to, to get back in, in, in tip top uh, shape and then, um, you know, just go from there. But I, I know that I still got it in me. And assuming that you are able to get some of the fights that you want, some of the fighters that you want in the cage or the ring, um, how much longer do you want to stay in, in competitive fighting? You mentioned uh, you're 40 years old. Do, have you thought about how much longer you want to stay in the game? I just want a couple uh, fights. I mean, you know, I, I don't have to be 45 years old and still be in it. Um, just a, a few competitive uh, fights that I could, that I, I could get that, that could get me back into the rankings um, you know, it'll, it'll be enough for me. And have you thought about post fighting career, what you want to do? Do you want to go into training, commentating? Do you want to do something outside of fighting? Have you thought about that at all? Yeah, I've been, you know, um, I've been doing uh, personal training. Uh, that's what I do now. Um, other than that, uh, my wife and I, we have, we own a yoga studio, um, that she runs. Uh, but you know, we, I'm always op open-minded to anything. Um, you know, if I could think of something that, that thing makes sense to me, um, I'll do it. Uh, but right now that's what I'm doing. I'm just, uh, doing the personal training and, uh, and owning the, the yoga studio. And so if you were to give me a prediction, like we said, there's so many unknowns right now with everything that's going on in the world. Um, but just to, just to close it out, if you were giving me to give me a prediction, where will we see Kermit Cintron uh, later this year? Is it going to be a cage? Is it going to be a ring? Who's across from you? If you had to, if you had to guess, uh, it's it's hard. It's it's hard. It's hard to uh, to even guess. Um, but uh, you know, like I know um, my promoter Marshall Coffin. I know that that he would uh, he would try to get me the the, the fights that I want. Uh, it, it just it's always up to the next, the other promoters uh, and, and and the fighters themselves. Um, you know, I was always, um, on the, on the other side where like nobody wanted to find me because I'm, I'm a dangerous fighter, you know, I could punch. Um, but you know, I think that the fighters today, they need to, uh, you know, start stepping it up. Uh, I, I won't mind even fighting, uh, I, uh, one of the young uh, fighters at, at 160, 168, whatever. Um, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm hoping to get, get one at least one fight, you know, and get that 40th win. And j just to close it out, um, obviously, you know, we talked a lot about what's going on in the world, the global pandemic, a lot of the social issues that are coming up, um, people fighting for change, things like that. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a crazy time in, in our world. 
Uh, I know that you've been through a lot in life. Uh, you lost your parents early in life. Uh, your trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, we know he passed away as well. Uh, so you've dealt with a lot of tragedy in life. Any words of encouragement, um, any words of optimism to, to people out there going through the tough times that everyone's going through right now? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, every, everybody goes through um, different situations, but everybody goes through those tough times. Um, it just, you know, it's, it's one of the things is just staying positive and, and, you know, and just keep trucking forward, you know, just keep moving forward. You know, don't, don't look behind, just, you know, life happens so quickly, you know, you just have to just keep moving forward and, and, and move on from, from what the negative has, you know, been whatever negative has been in, into your life. Uh, just get rid of that and just keep moving forward. Well, Kermit Cintron, I want to thank you so much of the time. Best of luck. Uh, if we see you in the ring against Sergio Martinez or in an MMA cage, we'll be watching. Uh, thanks so much for the time. Uh, thank you, man. Really appreciate it.